Hey everyone, this week, because everyone asks so much about what's behind me here, we're gonna go take a look. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former zookeeper and lifelong reptile enthusiast. And you're watching my channel called Reptile Mountain TV, a place where I can share evidence-based practices, keeping and breeding blue tongue skinks, and a few others just for fun. Okay guys, so here's what we've got. This is my Exoterra wall, if you will. It has four Exoterra large lows, which are 36 by 18 by 12, which is 36 long, 18 deep, 12 high. Um, for my non-American friends, that's 90 centimeters by 45 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And then below that, I have three Exoterra, I believe they're called medium wides, which is 24 long by 18 deep by 18 high. So these three down here are um, 60 by 45 by 45. The reason they're taller is because I wanted to be able to stand right up close and look down and still see the back of the enclosure without having to bend over and look in. So see as I'm standing right here pretty close you can still see the back of the enclosure, which means I can see the animals, which was the point. Um, I didn't want to have to bend over to look at some of my critters. So uh, let's first by talking about the actual shelf itself. I built this shelf out of two by fours and plywood, relatively cheap. I believe the whole thing cost about 150 bucks to build, and, and that includes paint and hardware and so on and so forth. So what it is, as you can see, it's just a good old standard 2x4 with a plywood um, base that's been screwed together. Um, and then I use 2x4s to sturdy it. Now what I did is actually, you can see here, is I've got this 2x4 is bearing the weight and it's got a second 2x3 underneath. And that 2x3 holds the actual weight you can see it over here as well you can see how that one's bearing weight and that's the point is that the weight is going to be bared all the way down all the way down to the caster at the bottom so um, I got this plan from a doomsday preparer guy who was wanting to hold a bunch of canned goods and he wanted it to be able to hold a whole bunch of weight and this sucker will hold a lot of weight without ever bowing or any sort of issue because it's got a lot of um, strength built into it and each caster of course is built to hold I believe each one was rated at 500 pounds each so this whole thing can hold about 2,000 pounds which is quite a lot so now let's go over to the design so on the inside see there's a gap here that was the plan one to give it strength um, also to give it a space to put lighting and so I've got little under cabinet disc lights LED disc lights they don't put off any heat they just give ambient light and then I also have under here it's right behind here is a fluorescent light it's not a um, UVB light I didn't I just don't need it I use dietary supplementation but it gives good light look to the animals so there's two um, fluorescent lights one here one here one here one here one there and one there two per row so I'm um, sorry for shaking you around now let's go to and check out the enclosures. Now I showed this enclosure before. This was Picacho's enclosure. It was a northern blue tongue skink. There's nothing in here right now. Um, I moved Picacho to a rack and I'm gonna be converting this into a tannin bar enclosure. Um, there's a lot of work to do on the inside, obviously. Tannies are a little different. And then we'll move over here and you can see my T positive caramel um, blue tongue skink, a little gorgeous creature. A very pretty little skink, aren't you? Yeah, so that's Zion, and he, um, he's going to, he, she, I don't know yet what the sex is, um, it's going to turn one year old on August 17th, so about, um, about a year old, or not August, April 17th, literally this month. Then we'll pan down and we'll see a little hypo sunset. He's, the light is shining off that spot. That's not exactly the only spot that's warm. Actually, that whole rock heats up to a wonderful temperature. And this little guy's got food all in his mouth. He had a good yummy dinner and he is a fat kid. So he actually has to go on a diet. He's been on a diet, but he still has to eat a little bit. But he is not getting what he used to because he has... Um, 
a good appetite. This is a little hypo sunset, um, second generation hypo sunset to hypo sunset, and this is what came out of it from Ray Gergi. He's an awesome little dude. He is a male, I've seen sperm plugs and hemipenes from this one. Let's pan over here and we can see paducals. Look at that red Aryan Jaya blue tongue skink. Let's go inside and see if we can see paducals little face. He's kind of, he, she is hiding around the corner here. Hey, paducals. Peekaboo. He's hiding there pretty good. Let's see if we can't get, can you see him? There he is, or she. I think it actually might be a female, although there's a long tail, so I'm not really sure. But either way, this is a pretty cool little skink. Love the colors on this one. Hoping that my other one pairs up nicely and I can maybe start doing a little bit of red uh, line breeding. I don't know if it's a genetic heritable trait or not, but we will give it a go. And then pan down here, you've seen this snake before if you've watched the... Um, uh, Tarahumara Spotlight. This is Martha. She is a, I believe, 15 or 16 year old. She's like, hey, what's up? Uh, Tarahumara Mountain King Snake. So coming from the Tarahumara Mountain region in uh, Mexico, the Sierra Madre region, also known as the Chihuahua Mountain region. And so, um, yes, she is on pea gravel. Um, this snake and a few other snakes are probably the only few that could really go on pea gravel successfully without an issue. I wanted to make a naturalistic display um, and I believe I achieved it. I'm pretty proud of this cage actually. Um, but uh, she does not risk uh, ingesting any of that pea gravel with the way I feed her and the way she operates and so um, the way she lives. So she's just fine. Yeah, good girl. And then we'll pan over here to Aussie Dunny Rat's enclosure. This is Aussie Dunny Rat's enclosure, my pink tongue skink, Australian pink tongue skink, Hemispheridon gerardii. And um, the little guy is right in there. Say hi. Hey, buddy. He's very shy. He's still new to the enclosure, new to the entire environment. It's very different setup than what he was in before um, from what I saw in pictures. And so he's just getting a little bit adjusted. He's got some food down there. He hasn't eaten yet for today, but that's no big deal. He's eaten quite a bit lately, so I'm not worried about him. But this is Ozzy Dunny Rat's enclosure. And then we'll move over here and look who's poking her head out. There is Magdalene the anatheristic pioneer town, Rosie Boa. Now these little guys are incredible. I mean, look at the colors on this snake. Look at the lavender color on that snake. She is just smoking beautiful. She is um, a Rosie Boa that's come from pioneer town, California. Um, there was two wild type adults that are, I believe they were adults, maybe they were juveniles that were caught and then later produced this in captivity. And not this one, but this color rate variation. And then um, they had a difficult time getting them to do it again. And later, finally, we're able to prove it out as simple recessive. And um, so we've got these days, these beautiful creatures. Mike Goldbarg um, out of Fork Tongue Farms. He breeds these. This one is a gorgeous 2014. Look at that eye. It's like baby blue. And um, I'm hoping this year to acquire a hat and breed these because, um, man, I just really like them. I think they're just gorgeous and an excellent pet. One of the best boas around. Live bearers like our skinks, uh, like the blue tongue skinks here. So this right here and then up top here, just a little bit of storage. This is my Exoterra wall. Thank you so much for sticking around, checking out my ExoTerra setup, and I look forward to talking with you and seeing you on future YouTube videos. Is a Gila monster, Utah banded Gila monster, Heloderma suspectum synctum. This is one of two types of venomous.